Hi, everyone. Um, I have something to read to you. So in our last exciting installment about streetlights, we covered the capacity that they have to be incorporated into the Internet of Things in such a way as to record, harvest and process data with the no doubt soon to be updated definition of data as it refers to human behavior or less technically speaking, you. Um, these gifts to society can also shout at you, which I believe was referred to as being some sort of public service. I hope everyone watching this is maintaining their two meter distance. Um, and they also promote the transmission of 5G, which is a whole other video while providing a handy pole on which lots of other lovely smart city installations can be affixed for the unending benefit of humanity, who it cannot possibly be disputed, given the uh, widespread and erroneous misconception that they were born and have the right to remain free, require to be under constant surveillance. Today, we're going to have a quick look at the actual LED light itself in all its apparently more energy efficient glory. Um, it may interest you to know that tungsten or incandescent light bulbs, which if you like me are sufficiently decrepit, uh, will refer to as ordinary light bulbs. Um, these light bulbs are now illegal to sell in the UK. Obviously, if you're in the UK, it won't interest you to know that because you already know you can't buy them. Um, apparently, this happened on the back of a European Union decision to ban them, a directive with which the UK complied sans recourse to parliamentary debate, despite knowing that LED lights are actually detrimental to the health of humans and other living creatures, which I will reference later on. So, on what basis can I make that claim? Well, here comes the science. Remember to listen and follow. Um, I learned the following from a video interview with Dr. Robert Hansen of University College Lon London, the link to which I'll put in the description. He in turn references Dr. John Marshall from the same university, who is an acclaimed optical surgeon and academic in the optical field. Light, which is visible to the human eye, ranges from approximately 380 to 700 nanometers. A nanometer, you may or may not be interested to know, but I'm going to hit you with it anyway, denotes a unit that is one billionth of a meter and is commonly used to specify the wavelength of electromagnetic radiation within the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So within this visible spectrum, light that falls between the 500 to 700 nanometer wavelength is healthy for human consumption. It repairs body cells by helping to convert food energy into cell regeneration, like a quasi form of photosynthesis, in the sense that we humans and other living creatures require natural light in order to be healthy. Tungsten, incandescent, ordinary light bulbs are capable of producing light that spans the full range of visible nanometers, but the light bulbs that we are familiar with, those with which we used to light our homes and offices prior to the advent of fluorescent and LED lighting, deliver the white, yellowish, red light, which falls within the range which is healthy for human optical processing. Any visible or invisible light below the 380 to 400 nanometer range um, is what we commonly now refer to as blue light. This is the kind of light that's emitted by our computers, Kindles and phones. And at the other end of the spectrum, light which falls above the 700 nanometer range is what we call infrared light. Now, according to the aforementioned optical optical expert, Dr. John Marshall, a blue light or LED light destroys cells, gets behind the eye and can cause macular degeneration of the retina, leading to cataracts and reduced vision. You can't make LED light produce light, which is in the healthy range. But what you can do is color the light so that it appears to have the same hue as a healthy white, yellowish, red light. 
The problem is particularly exacerbated in the case of LED street lighting because by their very nature, they're turned on at night um, and are not therefore counterbalanced by natural sunlight. So literally the only light being received is destroying cells and in particular those involved in the production of melatonin, which makes it harder for people to sleep. LED lights also flash at a rate which is imperceptible to the human eye. But um, if you think of a fluorescent light bulb as it nears the end of its effective utility, you've likely experienced the distortion of well-being, concentration and headaches that can ensue when they do start flickering. Um, according to waveform lighting, again, I'll put the link in the description, um, just because flickering is not immediately evident or perceivable to our eyes, our bodies can subconsciously react and respond to what is essentially a very rapid strobe light. Flicker has been associated with eye strain, fatigue, headaches, and even elevated risks of seizures. So far, so deeply unpleasant. But you will be surprised, my friends, I suspect not a jot to discover that it gets worse. And remember that so far, I haven't touched on the overt weaponization of these lovely installations, which I will get onto in my next bright and cheery episode of the riveting subject that it is street lighting, having hopefully received feedback from the experts to whom I have reached out. So you'll be happy to know that we are still well within the realms of what the powers that be couldn't care less about whether you know. Um, so according to Dreamway Tech, link in the description, um, and again, I'm quoting, blue rich light is also risky for children since it has the potential to affect their growth and in particular their vision. Children are naturally born with very clear lenses, which gradually cloud up as they age. Their lens reaches a peak performance around the age of 20 and gradually declines slowly after that. Due to their clear lenses, the blue light generated by LED reaches their retinas directly, thereby causing potential harm. Other age groups susceptible to blue light are infants, teenagers and toddlers. Also included in this list are the aged, pregnant women and people with ocular diseases or artificial lenses. So having heartened you all thus with my enlightening introduction to the world of LED street lighting, I'm going to leave you with the suggestion that you watch the link in the description to a 10 minute video, which involves British ex-weapons specialist, Mark Steele, taking a part in 2019, an LED streetlight fitting, which was sent to him by someone at a British council, which in Britain just means the smaller administrative groups that are in charge of dealing with the government budget for any given area, like Glasgow City Council or Nottinghamshire City Council. Anyway, this gentleman was taken to court for his attempts to tackle the issue of 5G as regards LED street lighting by Gateshead Council, who accused him of harassment. Now, the judge told him he was to stop calling the council workers baby killers and such the like, but he refused to gag him, saying that the issue should be debated and that the public has a right to know. Um, I'll also include a link to a rather fantastic interview in which the BBC attempts to ridicule him on the correlation between 5G coronavirus and all the other wild conspiracy theories out there. And he absolutely annihilates them with his breadth of knowledge and expertise on the subject. Oh, and just before you go, I want to bore you with one more sheet of academic paper to add to your LED lighting research pile by way of a contribution to the Journal of Environmental Science and Health, Part A, Toxic slash Hazardous Substances and Environmental Engineering, submitted by researchers at Texas Southern University. It's a study of the impact of exposure to light emitting diodes, LEDs, um, domestic lighting on C. elegans, which, as I'm sure you all well know, are free living transparent nematodes, um, which is a type of microscope, microscopic parasite. 
Anyway, this study was done in 2017, and the conclusion will also be the conclusion to this, our latest delightful interaction. So until the next time, when we talk about how they are actively rather than passively trying to eradicate us with LED street lighting, I will leave you with the results of this study, which found that High energy blue light induces stress in nematode C. elegans. This was shown on its effect on egg hatching, development, population, progeny, locomotion, and survival. However, the output of the LED lights used in this study was much lower compared with the output that is commonly used in homes or office lights. There is an urgent need for a better evaluation of potential light toxicity, depending on the artificial light sources, specifically the levels of blue light emissions in white LED light. So um, thank you so much for listening, guys. Um, I appreciate you coming with me on my journey as I learn about LED street lighting. Um, perhaps you already know and you're just along for the ride, or maybe you're learning with me, whatever the case is, you know, um, I love you. Yeah, I love you. Thank you. Your support keeps me going um, in these difficult times. And um, I hope to bring you more information about LED street lighting shortly and then we can you know wrap this uh, particular um, you know dialogue up and move on to some other apocalyptic disaster <laughs> anyway I love you dearly bye bye bye